If your company or your client's company offers software as a service, odds are you've probably heard of Captera. If you haven't, Captera is a software listing and review site that has over 700 categories to help people searching for software find the one that's right for them based on the company profile as well as actual user reviews on the platform. There is a free version of the site where you can list your company and show up when people are searching in specific categories, but there's also a PPC version that lives within this platform as well that can help you boost your listing to get to the top of a category and customize your messaging to make sure you're speaking to certain people at the top of that category listing. So today I'm gonna go through kind of the basic intro 101 level stuff of what the dashboard looks like, what types of settings are available, what you can do, how you can customize your listings, to start making your Captera listing stand out from the crowd on their platform. Let's hop in. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is give you a little bit of a rundown of what Captera looks like from the user perspective. And this will kind of lead into why you would wanna do advertising on Captera in the first place. So when you go to any listing, I just went to one of the first ones that showed up, 3D architecture software. I have nobody in the architecture software space, but just an easy one to look at. You can see that there are a few things here. So there are some filters on the left, and then there are the listings kind of in the center slash right of the page. And each of these is clearly for a different company. It's got a pretty big call to action button up on the top right. And you can see now that we've kind of shifted into different profile looks, right? So this first one here is a paid ad. This company is paying to show up at the top of the page. They are bidding on things. This company here is not. This is an organic listing. It is not boosted through PPC. And you can tell quite a big difference when it comes down to it. So obviously there's a difference between how much text is showing the color of the buttons and kind of how much it stands out. But there are also some differences in the links themselves. When you go to any of the links on this blue listing here, all of them are going to take you to the Captera listing on the site. They're all going to be on the Captera website. You do not leave Captera for any of these. You can click on the view profile, this link, any of the reviews, the company name, or the company logo. All of those will take you into the company profile itself. For this listing up here at the top, the paid version, it's a little bit different. And I'm going to hop into just a screenshot that I made to show you the difference of where each of the links will take you. So I've got that same ad here. Basically, when you click on either the icon or the learn more about the company link, this is going to take you to the Captera listing in the same way that you would for the organic listing that we looked at just a little bit ago. If you click on either the stars or the number of reviews that show up here, that's going to take you to the Captera listings page, but the reviews portion of it. You're going to be put directly into where people have reviewed whatever software, whatever company that you're looking at. The two up here at the top are the ones that are a little bit more of a benefit to Captera advertising. These will take the user directly to your website on whatever landing page you designate with whatever tracking parameters you designate. So keep that in mind. The difference between these two is kind of that you have a little bit more control over this paid ad because there are a couple places that people can click that will take them directly to your website as opposed to staying on Captera. That's one of the reasons that we pay for the click. The second thing I wanna talk about before we jump into the platform itself is the architecture of Captera. There are three different levels within the platform that we need to be aware of and kind of know how they relate to each other. The highest level up here is the company. Uh, and I just gave it the name Acme just because it's a generic company name. This is whatever your company is. So when you are setting things up, obviously this is going to show up as your company. The next level are products. These are what your company actually offers. So as an example, I put together data storage as well as data reporting. Let's say those are two completely different products or services that you provide and they need to be treated differently. So you will list all of your products in Captera as well. Lastly, the listing slash category, it depends on where you are in the interface, what they call it. These are basically the sections of the Captera website that you can show up in. When we saw earlier, I was on the 3D architecture software listing or category and that's where all the companies showed up. What you do here is you choose which listing or category you want your product to show up in. So you're kind of mapping those two together. So that's how those relate to each other. So as I'm going through the interface, just remember that there are three separate pieces, the company, which is you as a whole, the products, which are your offerings, and the listing or category. And that is the section of the Captera website that you're going to show up in. 
When you log into the Captera platform, the first place it's gonna take you is this dashboard and you'll be able to see your listings. It'll give you a few of the different stats that you can see here. It'll have links to manage your listings and view click report, which will take you to a couple places I'll show you here in just a minute. It'll also give some high level information around how much of your budget you have remaining for the month, as well as how much of the month has elapsed so far. This is something that Captera always wants you to stay on top of because they try and make it so your budget is pacing out for 100% of the month, basically. They want you to spend your whole budget, but not spend it so fast that you couldn't have coverage over the entire month. So this is something that you'll see in here. And then there's also just a completion rate on your account and on your profile. That's something to keep in touch with. Before I hop into any of these main sections here, I want to jump into the account settings first, and that's gonna be up here. So you can go up into your account and then account settings. And really quick, because I'm not gonna come back to this link up here in the top, when you hover over this, you'll see that there's account settings, but there's also company profile, billing history, conversion tracking, all this good stuff. These are also listed here. So we'll just go through them in this kind of middle section of the page rather than hopping back up to that link up in the top right. So the first thing to know is that in the account settings, this is where obviously you're going to manage your account at a high level. One of the things to know about Captera is that you will always have an account rep assigned to you and their information will show up over here on the right in this box. I'm sorry we have it blurred out, but you just don't need to know who the rep is for this account. It'll also then show you the regular contact information billing information, again, that is blurred out for you. If we scroll down the page, there are a couple things that I wanna look at. The first is billing information, but not the credit card number. The set up on the monthly budget. So it will always show you in this section kind of how far you've gotten into your budget as well as your monthly limit. And that's something to keep in mind because your campaigns will turn off if you reach your monthly limit in the account. It doesn't matter what day it is. There's no pacing associated with it. If you hit your monthly budget on the 15th, your ads will be shut off and they will automatically be turned back on on the first of the following month. So you can change your monthly budget cap here just by opening up changing whatever it is, and then hitting save. The next thing to note is choosing your network. I've been referring to this as Captera because that's the platform that you searched for probably to find this video. It is the more popular one, but this is run by the Gartner network as a whole. And there are two other platforms that you can run in here that are pretty similar to Captera. They have their differences, but you can also receive traffic from GetApp and Software Advice. You can go check those out on your own time, see what the differences are. There are a number of different listings for each of them. So Captera has a set of listings, GetApp has a set of categories, and Software Advice has its own set. Some of them overlap, some of them are unique to those individual platforms. So I would encourage you to go check out the listings on each of the different platforms, see which ones you want to receive traffic for, and then this is where you'll change that setting. You just have to check the box and hit save once you're done. Obviously this account is opted in, but if we wanted to opt out, all we'd have to do is uncheck the box and hit save again. Okay, so then hopping back up to the top, there are a number of these different links that are here that I talked about earlier. Company profile is the profile that you put forward on Captera, GetApp, Software Advice. This is going to be very similar if you were filling out a social profile. Make sure that this is as filled out as it possibly can be. Remember on the first dashboard page, it said that this one was completely set up. It's 100%, so it's good to go. This is the type of information that people are going to see if and when they come to your Captera page. So make sure that it's as accurate accurate as it can be, it's compelling, and it does a good job laying out what your company is. Um, there's then billing history, not quite as important for this. Uh, there are a few other links, but the bigger thing I wanna talk about is conversion tracking. So that's also here. This is where you'll set this up. When you click on this link, it'll take you to the conversion tracking section. There are basically two steps, pretty easy. You need to check a box to confirm that you have read and agree to the conversion tracking PPC services description, all this good stuff, and make sure that you opt into conversion tracking basically on your website. Once you do that, this second step will show up and there will be two ways that you can track your conversions that Captera automatically has kind of some setup instructions for. You can either track based on a page load, which is the more standard implementation. You'd place the pixel that shows up here on your thank you page in the same way you normally would. If you don't have a thank you page or need to do some other tracking, they do have track conversions on clicks available in the same way that you would do some sort of event tracking. So there are a number of steps here that you can go through to make sure that all this is set up and then you can track based on button clicks and events on your website as opposed to the regular page load. 
Okay, so getting out of the high level account settings portion, uh, we already looked at dashboard. That's where we were dropped off whenever we first came into the platform. Let's go to the second section, which is listings. And here we'll start to see some of the differences in the organization that I talked about earlier. I apologize that a lot of this is blurred out, but you don't need to know whose account this is to get the understanding that you need to run Captera accounts. So you will see your company name as well as the product name showing up here. And then they'll have a little star rating that shows kind of how your reviews are coming in, that sort of thing. If you need to have a new product, you can simply click add product and there will be a section that pops up here where you put in all of your information. You'll then choose your category that you would want associated with it. And once you send that request in, that will go to that account rep that we talked about earlier that also showed up on your dashboard with their contact information. But right now we don't wanna do that. So let's just look at what's in here for the single product that's in this account. So this basic info section is kind of what you would want your default listing to look like no matter what category you showed up in. This is going to be kind of a catch-all, if you will, for any of the listings that you wanna show up in. For this basic info, you get a long description, a short description, destination URL, and spotlight links. For any of this, I would say make this as meaningful as possible while also being relevant for any of the listings that you might wanna show up in. And any of the different URLs that you see here I would highly encourage you to put the UTM parameters that you want for Captera on these links because these will be the outbound links when people come to your site. The different sections that you'll see up here underneath basic info are where you'll fill out the rest of your company profile. So product details, features, media, media being either videos or photos of your software. This is where you'll fill out the rest of your company profile. Again, make sure this is as filled out as possible so it can be as impactful as possible. Now let's get down to the listings themselves and what will show up for our ads. So down here at the bottom, we have the actual category listings that we're going to show our product in. There are four of them total. Three say default in this first tab, which means that they are going to use the information that is in the basic info section that's up here. But one says customized. And by clicking this blue down arrow next to one of the categories, it'll open up a section where it has basically the same information that you saw up in the basic info section. You get a long description, short description, and then a number of links off to the side. And just by clicking edit, you can then customize these different fields for that specific listing. Because this one says customized, it has different language in it that will only show up for this specific category that our product is going to be listed in. On the same tab, you can choose to add a new category listing to your campaigns just by clicking this. It will then direct us, as you can see, into the bidding section, which is helpful because that's where we were going next anyway. But it will open up this window here that will allow you to request a category. So let's just say that we wanted to go into content management just because. You can click that and click review category. That will then take you through a number of steps getting in touch with your rep to have you show up for that additional category. I'm not gonna go through that on here today, but that's the way that you would get a new category added to your account should you want one. So like I said earlier, we're now in the bidding tab. We've gone from listings over into bidding. And this is where we do, go figure, the bidding. We can also start off here by seeing that you can adjust your account monthly budget here as well. So it's not only in the account settings, but the biggest thing that we wanna do here is actually start adjusting our bids for each of the different categories that we're in, as well as the different locations that we're advertising in. So obviously the biggest portion of this page is going to be this grid that's down here. We have our different category listings that are associated here, as well as some of the locations. And then you can see that there are three sets of columns, Captera, GetApp, and Software Advice, because we're advertising on all three in this account. And each of them shows you the current bid, the estimated position, estimated clicks, and estimated cost at that original bid that we have in place. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit because if you click on this little carrot next to it, it will break this apart by the different countries that we're currently advertising in. So each of these line items will associate with one of the different bids that we have in place. So again, when you hover over this piece here, you can see that it kind of grays all of it out and has edit. We'll just click on that and it'll take us to this grid that will show us what the bids are currently, a lot of the stats that we already saw on the previous tab, as well as the different countries that we have here. You'll notice that there's a big section over here that's a little bit blank at the moment 
template. So as soon as you click into one of your bids, it brings up a table that shows you different ranges of performance based on the bid that you have in place. So right now we're at 1825. So that's why it kind of put us here. But if I hover over this, it'll one, make the chart really kind of difficult to read but you can see that they have multiple different estimated stats based on any different bid level. So again, right now we're at 1825, but if we were to increase the bid up to 7550, we'd estimate that we would have about $29,000 in spend, 18 leads, all this stuff. And obviously, as you could see, as I was going over each of these, all you have to do is click this button to select the bid and it will change the bid for you for the section that you are currently looking at. So an easy way to roll it out if that set of estimated stats is what you're looking for. This bid estimator will be different for each of the different locations that you have. So it'll make sure to update the stats based on each of the different areas that you're in. Obviously these two bids are pretty close, but the performance metrics are a bit different. The estimated performance is a bit different just because of the performance that the account has seen for that country so far. And right now we're only in the Capterra section. There is a get app portion, as well as a software advice portion that will do the same thing. The functionality is the same. Uh, it just will change the bid on different listings. So there is quite a bit of power to be had with the different bidding strategies here insofar that you can bid differently based on the listings, the actual site that you're on, as well as the different countries that you are targeting, making sure that you've got those bids dialed in exactly where you need them for Australia on Capterra versus the United States on software advice, making sure that you're focusing in exactly on what's going to perform the best. Now, the last thing I want to look at is insights, and this is a very poorly named version of reporting. The insight section is basically the reporting section that you would come into. So this is where I spend a lot of time because this is where we pull the reports for account performance. And there are only a few things that you can do in here. So let's just scroll down a bit. This box here is where you're going to impact what the report is actually going to show you down below. And then obviously the report down below is whatever information associated with the date range that you have chosen. Each of these will show the different listings. We still have the same four listings that we've got. It shows what the the average cost per click was, position, clicks, conversion, conversion rate, cost, and cost per lead. You'll notice that impressions are not one of the metrics on here. Captera does not tell you what the impressions are. I believe GetApp does. If you filter for only the GetApp performance, it'll show you impressions. But if you're trying to find impressions for Captera, they just will not show up because that's not a metric that they share. But again, if you want to adjust, you can pull data for only a specific channel using this grid up here. So either Captera, GetApp, Software Advice, or all of them together, which is the default. You can also change the report to show only a specific country that you want in there or have them all grouped together. And then the date range, it'll automatically start off as custom based on whatever the month to date performance is. And it will always exclude the day that you're on, but it does have some different preset date ranges if you want to take a look and use one of those. Then whenever you click get report, that just means the data will populate down in the table below. So if I were to change this to say last month, nothing changed on the page as you can see. But then if I click get report, the entire page reloads and now the data in the table is different. Get report up here basically just means show me the data for the parameters that I have set up here. The last piece is if you want to download this, just click the download daily activity. And I warn you, this is literally daily activity. So let's go ahead and download one and I'll show you what I mean. So pulling this into Excel, this is what the report will look like when it's downloaded. It literally will show you the day of the report and the category name associated with it and the channel and the location associated with each of these. And each of these has their own set of line items. You will not have a clean and easy table like you do in the interface. When you download performance, just be aware that you're probably going to need to set up some pivot tables to show you some aggregate performance. Otherwise, this can be quite a lot to look at for a month's worth of performance. I've scrolled down nearly 100 lines and I'm still only on the third date of the month. Just keep that in mind when it comes to reporting. Hopefully this video and run through has given you the confidence you need to feel comfortable in the Captera dashboard and make sure that you're customizing your listing and bids, whether it's on Captera, GitApp, Software Advice, or any of the different geographies you're targeting to make sure you're getting the most out of your campaigns. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.